Hello everyone, welcome to a new video on martial politics. Uh, today I will be, I haven't made a video in a little while, but uh, today I will be making, I will be discussing uh, Tucker Carlson and his role in the Republican Party and how he has really shifted the way not just uh, Republican Party voters think, but also um, what politicians have said um, yeah, recently. So, really, the, the thing that really made me made this, make this video is um, Terry Carlson's recent comments he made um, about uh, basically how the Democratic Party is inviting, you know, large scale immigration from uh, Latin, uh, from Latin American and Latin American, mostly Latin American countries, and how that in turn is basically changing the voting demographics in the United States, which in turn, of course, give power to the Democratic Party. So, and basically he said, like, you know, they're replacing the, you know, the current voting, cla uh, voting class in the United States. Yeah, he's absolutely correct. So when this happened, a bunch of new liberals, uh, and of course, you know, left-wing, Activists, they lost their minds over this, and there's many, many, many different uh, people who spoke out against this. And really, I don't care to mention who, uh, but you know, the typical CNN, MSNBC, you know, all of them. So, and he, didn't, and the thing about this is, he didn't even say this on his show. He did make a 20 minute monologue about this a few days later, uh, the next week. Um, it was a very good. Uh, well, I'll actually put the link to it in the description. Uh, now I will just play that clip, which I was just speaking about. Uh, basically, talking about how the current demographics are being replaced um, by Hispanics coming from Latin America. Uh, that was with like with Mark Stein on Fox News primetime, some like, shows before his. But uh, yeah, just watch that. And I will be back. You made a throwaway line and uh, the government says, you know, that's a great idea, but only for people who shouldn't be in the country in the first place. I'm laughing because this is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, mm. our system itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, mm. with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it, that's mm. true. Mm. If, if, look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without telling you, your, kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings and gave them brand new bikes and let them stay up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you, you would say to your siblings, you know, I think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. And it'd be kind of hard to argue against you because look at the evidence. So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. So I don't mm. understand why we don't understand this. I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know, white replacement theory. No, no, no. This is a voting rights question. I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one man, one vote, and they're diluting it. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? So as you saw in that clip, Terry Carlson basically outlined how um, the demographics in the United States are being replaced and how the Democratic Party is in turn gaining power and that they don't really need to care about for the interests of the American people. They can just pack the electorate with people who solidly vote for them pretty much no matter what. So because of that, he he really got a massive 
public outcry. And this is just one of the few issues where Tiger Carlson has really, he's really been influential in how he's taken these strong positions um, pretty much no matter what, really. So, originally with Tiger Carlson, he was actually more of a libertarian uh, person. He supported Ron Paul uh, in 2008 and 2012, I believe. I think 2012 as well. Um, and he really, he really, you know, he supported, you know, like, you know, untattered laissez-faire capitalism, uh, small government, you know, the typical libertarian talking points, which I've discussed, which I discussed, uh, in a recent video, um, about how, you know, libertarianism is just a terrible ideology, and there's always these claims, oh, it has never been implemented, blah, 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 when a lot of the economic elements that they discuss, they're prevalent in our main society, it's just in our, really, what it is, is our current system is just a corptocracy, guys, as laissez-faire capitalism, but what led to that is laissez-faire capitalism. Uh, and really, capitalism is kind of an incremental like process, and the power of corporations and individuals it has continued to grow <laughs> over time because of technological innovation, you know, globalization, etc. So you, Terry Carlson, was really involved in that strain of thought, <laughs> and um, he really began to change his mind uh, when he began like interviewing people like Pat Buchanan. And, um, you know, the paleo conservatives who, yeah, I, I agree more with than other types of conservatives. Um, though I'm more of a, like a right wing populist, uh, they're right on like issues of war. Some of them are kind of more interventionist on the economy, some aren't, but, uh, they're definitely much better than like the traditional conservatives. Um, so, so yeah, basically, Target Carlson, he started interviewing. Uh, all these paleoconservative people, and really, he began to really change his ideology as a whole. Only people will say, "Oh, it wasn't sincere," and you know, you'll hear this a lot um, from people who are like, "Oh, he's just a grifter or whatever." When really, he's been, to be honest, I think he, <clears throat> I think he's just been too honest and you know, passionate with like his ideology that. Um, you, that he really, I really don't think he's you know, being grifting and getting money uh, just for doing this. Because um, what you've seen uh, later on, you saw this uh, like in during Trump's administration, where he really he wasn't afraid to criticize Trump for things he saw him like failing on. So you saw you saw Tucker Carlson criticizing. This was like in last summer. It was a really good. It was a really good monologue he discussed basically how trump's administration has basically been you know taken no essentially taken over by uh jared kushner and his allies and how like they've shifted trump's positions on different issues so like with the riots last summer they basically people in his administration are telling him not to use military force to crush them uh meanwhile people like Tory Cross and you know famously Tom Collins send the troops, send in the troops. Uh, they were telling Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act, um, which I'm not sure if I, in hindsight I'm not sure if I would have supported that now, but I do see how at the current time someone would support that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, so what happened? So basically, there's also many other examples. Of Terry Carlson influencing Trump, and I think it was in 20, I don't remember what year this was, but I think it, was, it might have been like 2018, 2019, I think 2019 and 2018, uh, Terry Carlson basically convinced Donald Trump not to use, uh, not to use direct force against Iran, and how basically that would ensure that he wouldn't win re-election in 2020, actually I think this might have been 2019, um, like in the, the summer, um, and basically how, you know, that would abandon Trump's, uh, his original, like, promises to keep out of, you know, foreign wars, um, which Trump, of course, didn't do. But, uh, really, Tucker Carlson has been really influential in that way. And even on, um, on other issues as well, um, 
with economics, he's really, I think he's really tapped into something uh, new. And people have really changed their minds on uh, uh, economics in the Republican Party. I've seen this a lot recently. People are beginning to shift more to the left on economic issues. Um, I really began to shift to this position during like last spring, it, you know, almost exactly a year ago. You know, I used to be like, I used to watch the Daily Wire all the time. I even watched Bigger You unironically and enjoyed it. Um, but I, things really changed and, you know, people kind of realized that, you know, these conservative, um, you know, these conservative organizations, also uh, Charlie Kirk, Turning Point USA or whatever, he's kind of like redeeming himself a bit, but I'm not totally convinced yet. Um, but yeah, a lot of people were really invest in stuff like this. And what I've seen a lot recently is people are becoming, you know, sick with this garbage and, you know, the pra prayer you saying socialism, 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 uh, capitalism is the best, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they don't really care for, you know, the well-being of the American people. And they care about the well-being of corporations. And, of course, Israel. This bigger use, of course. A Zionist organization. But, um, yeah, so I was really invested into stuff like that. Uh, but when I watched Ben Shapiro's interview with Tucker Carlson, I think it was from 2018, late 2018, when um, Tucker Carlson was... Um, um, when he was doing his, uh, uh, like, in, like all these interviews for his books, uh, for his book, uh, Ship of Fools, um, that book is really good. I've quoted it. I've quoted from it a couple times, actually, um, in my, pre my previous video about immigration. Um, so it's called Ship of Fools. Um, uh, it's a pretty good book. Not that long. I recommend you buy it. Um. I think I got it for like less than twenty dollars, something like that. But um, yeah. So basically, uh, Tara Carlson he was getting interviewed by Ben Shapiro, and he was basically he he responded to a question by Ben Shapiro that like, would you, if you're president, like, would you um, like s prevent um, companies from having like these automated like automating the tr the trucking industry and then Tory carlson said yes i would like in a second and it was absolutely amazing so and really when i was watching this i began to really rethink what i thought about like economics and really what is you know what is best for american families and you know, the way Tori Carlson uh, really talked about in that interview basically said that, you know, you're, if, like, when you're killing one job from automation, you're killing an entire family. And in turn, you're killing, you know, potential more generations of Americans. So that really, I'd say that is a really effective argument to make. And it really changed many people's minds on these issues. I think that interview has like over a million views now. Um, it was really good because he, he really, he wasn't scared to go against the, you know, the Republican, uh, like econo establishing economic philosophy. And I really wish uh, we would see uh, Republican politicians begin to shift this way. But really, it, the big problem is we have such a tremendous amount of money in pol in politics and even even if you look at like polling in the Republican parties like I saw a poll um uh, uh Republican voters they want to they want to have a fifteen dollar minimum wage even Medicare for all as well and we haven't seen this reflected in what our politicians have pushed for so I'm not saying like Tiger Girls is supporting Medicare for all, but um, he's definitely probably we're probably it's he's probably the best like we're gonna get at this point in terms of you know a mainstream not like a large personality you know 
really shifting opinions uh, in in America, and like that pays dividends. And really, there's there's like no price you can put on that. Um, so that's why I really think that Tucker Carlson has really been unique in that way, and he's really shifted minds and even like the way politicians even uh talk even like legislation they've pushed so um and i think that you know in the future tar crossing will be able to basically i think he would be able to effectively uh similar to like how they call it trump a kingmaker i think tar cross would be able to do the same you know i think if we saw um, he's had J.D. Vance on his show a couple times, um, and he's even, you know, he's, he, I think he even endorsed um, Jeff Sessions over Tommy Tuberville uh, last year uh, in this Alabama Senate primary, um, and he's, like, it's just, we're never, this is gonna, this is so useful for the national populist movement, and I think it really he's really showing his power in that way, and I think in the future, if as long as Tucker Carlson continues, like if he continues to make these excellent arguments about like you know demographic replacement, his really good economic arguments he's made, he even agreed like with Elizabeth Warren on like her economic book on like the two income trap, I think that's what it's called. Um, even agreed with Bernie Sanders and AOC's uh, legislation, the the Sob Bezos Act, um, and it was really, uh, it's really excellent. And I think if he can really keep this up with you know all the things he's saying, and he has a massive audience as well, and he keeps getting boot, and every time he says one of these excellent things, he always faces, he always gets this response from the mainstream media. And it gives him tons of attention. So, really, I think that in the future, Turcross and he could be, you know, really a kingmaker in this way. I hope he would run for president, but I don't think it's really likely. But um, I think he's really good at what he's doing right now and shifting minds to these national populist or conservative national because i like the term national populist better uh, like a national populist arguments and he he's he even you know he's changed people's minds like you know america first not it doesn't mean american corporations first it means you know american families first and i really like how he's managed to make that argument as well um, so, oh, yeah, also, like, he's, even in the past, um, this is with, um, in last March, last year, uh, in February, he's basically, he actually was, you know, I was actually worried about the virus, really, um, and I think, honestly, I think if we did take, like, meaningful precautions i think we'd be in a much better position now because then the neoliberals wouldn't have been able to exaggerate so much um because really the virus the virus is deadly the way that's manipulated is that it's only deadly to a certain segment of the population um you know because we live in the united states and there's a lot of you know old boomers who don't even get exercise but uh i think tara carlson really realized that and he was he was actually warning Trump about this, and I think I even saw this this study. Like the the people who watched Tucker Carlson's show versus Sean Hannity, who basically didn't care about the virus and wasn't concerned. Like it showed people who were watching Tucker Carlson. Like the I don't I don't know if I trust it completely, but um, it did say like the cases were like lower or something um, among his viewers. I'm not sure how exactly they like studied that but i do think i don't think it is possible that could be true um because really tucker carlson was sending the alarm bells on the pandemic so really in turn what my my conclusion is is that really i think the message and effectiveness effectiveness of tucker carlson with his really good rhetoric um, and, you know, convincing 
many traditional conservatives or even libertarians to supporting these, you know, national populist, you know, um, these national populist um, like th uh, policies. I think that, like, this is really going to be, it's going to pave the way for the future. And I think, in turn, we're going to see an actual, you know, an actual populist, not like, you know, all these fake populists like Trump actually getting elected to office uh, and making meaningful change in society. So, uh, so yeah, uh, in conclusion, uh, Terry Carlson is a very important voice in the Republican Party. And I think in the future that, of course, the national populace will, you know, people will, these people will get elected to public office. And I think in turn, the country will be much better. So, uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. You can like and subscribe for more if you want. Comment and share if you, uh, as well. And, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video as well. Um, I haven't been that active recently. I've kind of been busy with, you know, school and all that. And I've really been kind of tired, actually. So, uh, I hope I will be making more videos soon. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like and, like and subscribe for more. And I hope you all, of course, have an excellent day. And yeah, that's it. Farewell.